Okay, so we have this number 15. We're going to use the shell method, which will turn out to be not the best method to use. And then we'll maybe look at a different way to go. So, so purpose to do yeah. not, not work, just not be the best not be way to do it. Yeah, not <gasps> convenient. Yes? Wasn't this a revolving around Well, did I choose the wrong line? X axis. Yeah, you did it. Oh, X axis right there. I can do it Okay, then I um, This would be not so bad if we were to revolve around a vertical axis. Yeah, those shells would be easy to define. But as we try to define these shells, we'll find uh, there's, there's just some inconvenience to it. Okay? So this graph right here is y equals 1 over x, and then it just is on the interval from 1 to 2. Okay. But the thing about shells that we have to define, define, let's not worry about the a to b yet. How about the radius? What is the radius of one of these shells? Uh, two. Well, the, 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 the value of the radius is going to be a y value, yeah. okay? And it's going to be, what, how do we choose the y value? Okay. It's just a problem. We, if, you, if you think about it, these shells are rotated like this rather than like this. Optimal shell uh, definition would be rotated around a vertical axis. So the, the shells are like these uh, cylinders that sit flat on the table. And now they're turned up like this, which is not optimal. It's not in, uh, uh, in terms of x, like we're used to. It's clearly in terms of y. So if we choose a y, that y will be our radius. And then that y will have to then define the x values that we use for well, whatever we need to maybe use x for. And so the radius is just y. Okay, now what's the, the height of this? shell here. It's an x value. Begin the interruption. Um, students who have shown up since first period, uh, now. Um, so you got a y value as the radius. The height is going to be an x value. But that x value needs to de be defined in terms of y, which means we need to solve for x. Solve this equation for x. Uh, you solve for x, you get the exact same function. So at this y value, this x value is 1 over y. Except that that's not the height of the rectangle, is it? How tall is the rectangle? I guess my rectangle is a little funky looking. It's okay. Um, okay, it should come down to here, not where I have it. Okay. So this distance here would be one minus one or one over y minus one. That would be our height. The height is 1 over y minus 1. Um, and what would the width be? Dx. Dy. Dy. So this is the shell method that's not going to work. Or that's going to work, work but, but it'll be used. Shell method, that's a word. I know it's not a word, but still. It will be not as convenient as, uh, as a different method. The reason being. Like once we, once our shells are made by rectangles in this region, then this doesn't work anymore. Okay. 
right? Because 1 over x or x equals 1 over y continues kind of off like that, goes up like that. So this 1 over y minus 1 is not going to work anymore, right? So what will the interval for this be from where to where? Up. One to two. One to two. No, you're looking on the x-axis. Two, two, and one. We're integrating with respect to y, which means that our our interval would need to be on the y-axis. So it's from here to there. Where is this? Where is that? From one half to one. One half? How do you know that's one half? <coughs> maybe it's one half, or maybe they're not very good drawers. Yeah, you said things equal to each other. Set what equal to what? They're very good drawers. Well, I guess we don't have to set anything equal to each other. We just have to figure out where this this thing is, where this dot is. Where is? How do we figure out where that is? Graph it. It's graphed. Done. Now what? <laughs> In your calculator. No. Yes, yeah, that's something we need to do. Say that's a two. Say that's a two. Two for x, and then then we find for y. Yeah. Okay. So put in two for x. Yes, one half is correct, right? One over x is two. One half. Uh -huh. One half. Two. What? One. To put in one in there. One over one is one. One half to one. So what does this represent? A body. Of. What? The whole thing? Nope. Of what? Of the just the curvy part there. Okay, the reason we have to cut that up, I mean why you tell me why do we have to cut that up? Why do we have to find the volume of this and then the volume of this separately? about the parts of the shell that you have to define. What? The height. Yeah, the definition of the height is going to change as we cross into this region. The height here of a rectangle, how much is the height of this rectangle, or this shell? One. Always one. Uh, so the, the definition changes from one region to the other because we kind of cut off this graph. We say, forget about that. They'll just use this. Whoa. Right. So this represents the volume of just this curved thing rotated around the x-axis. Using shells, which I mean, what's, why? Why would we use shells when we could use, use what shape? We could use washers or even when we, when we go this way, Every shape will be defined by this rectangle being rotated. And since the shape touches the axis of rotation, yeah. it dips. So we don't need to like cut out that, that hole in the middle. So disks, if we had the choice, disks would be better. Yeah, we Washers would. is not the greatest idea. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind when you're rotating things around axes, figure out what makes the most sense to use disc, washer, shell. Um, so we're going to have to add the volume of this guy here. What shape is this, though? Like this whole thing, when you rotate this region around the x-axis, what shape will that make? A cylinder. A cylinder, like a, just a perfect cylinder. How do you find the area or the volume of a cylinder? Pi r squared times the height. You take the area of a circle, you multiply it by the height, you get the volume. Okay, so pi, what's the radius of this cylinder? It's from here to there? Half. Half. Pi r squared uh, times the height. What's the height? One. Okay, so this, this part will be pi over four. Let's come over here. We have two pi. Um, y times 1 over y is just 1, and y to the negative 1 is 
y. So what's the answer derivative of 1 with respect to y? y. y. The, the, the answer derivative of negative y with respect to y? Negative 1 half y. There we go. Let me go from 1 half to 1. And we're going to add this, which will be pi over 4. That's a half minus, let's see, one half times one fourth is one eighth, one half minus one eighth, three eighths. Am I wrong? One half minus four eighths, or one, let's see, what, sorry, four eighths minus one eighth plus three eighths. Three eighths, gosh, four. Okay, so uh, four over eight. 8 minus 3 over 8, 1 over 8, 1 eighth times 2 pi will be 2 pi over, or yeah, pi over 2 pi over 8, pi over 4, plus pi over 4, oh. 2 pi over 
It's in the seven. It's the first hand. Okay. Yeah, so you can Are we going to start with. Came up with this. We'll, we'll do things that. You don't get a packet? Uh, we're gonna start with the most recent thing that we've already been covering for a while. That'll be volume solids. Okay, and then uh, we'll do that for about half class, and then the other half we'll do particle motion, which is I think a slightly easier, but uh, you know, uh, kind of a subject that comes up quite a bit on every AP test, not yeah. quite a bit, but dependently. Definitely is going to be there. Yes. So we're not getting a packet. You have a packet in your hand, you know you get a packet. You never get a packet. Mm -hmm. Either way. Oh, so my gosh. The limited. question of whether you have a packet or not. We're getting one. <laughs> there are. <laughs> time to work on the non-rotated solids, okay, so the ones that have typically square cross-sections, right, sound familiar? So we'll work this one together, and then there's a couple more, and if you want to go on to the rotated ones, you can, but that's what we'll do, what we'll be doing next. All right, so the important thing here is that you can uh, visualize the solid, visualize the cross-section, visualize what the equation of the cross-section will be. And to remember that our way of finding the volume is taking all of these, these squares, uh, turning them into these like really thin boxes, and uh, adding up all of those volumes. Right. And the volume of a box would just be, of any box with any cross section, would just be the area of a cross section times the width of a cross section. So it typically will be. Some formula involving x to find the area, then dx is the width. Okay. So r is the region uh, to find the, the first quadrant, so just the, the area that's in the first quadrant, so not going down here below, uh, bounded by the x-axis in the graph, the graphs of y equals the natural log of x. That's that guy. Um, y equals 5 minus x. as shown in figure above. So we're just going to take this little part of the question. Region R has a base, uh, is the base of a solid. For the solid, each cross section perpendicular, so perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. Write, but don't bother to evaluate an expression involving one or more integrals that gives the volume of the solid. Okay. So there's the integral that we want to write. Or maybe there are a couple of integrals. Um, so. Imagine square is a cross section. How will we find the area of that square? Well, side squared, the side length is y. Uh, yes. No, that's not a very good square. It's hard to draw a square. Oh, I was <laughs> impressed. Because no, it, it should be like this. Yeah, I think oh. in your past life you were an art teacher. Or just an artist in general. Do you? Do you sketch in your free time? So this has a square cross section. Got to stay focused. Sorry. What is the side length of this square? It's just y. Y. But how do we find y? Natural log of x. Okay. So that's the natural log of x. So the area of this guy would be the natural log of x squared. Okay. And this little guy here is dx. So we got the area, we, uh, we multiply by dx, we have the volume of this little square. Okay, so now is that height, is that, or that side length, always going to be defined by the natural log of x? No. no. It will stop being defined by the natural log of x, and the squares over here will be defined by? 5 minus x. Right? 
it's just a line with a, a, a y-intercept of 5 and a slope of negative 1. So this guy will be 5 minus x. So how do we find the area of this square? Square that. Square that. 5 minus x squared. We've got the, the volume of this solid with square cross sections is going to be the definite integral from what? One to something. How will we find that something? Something equal. Something equal. Okay, something equal to each other. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to set the natural log of x equal to 5 minus x. And then. And find out that's a very difficult equation to solve. If you had like the natural log of x equals 12, that would be easy. Just take e to the 12, and that would tell us what x is. But if we have the natural log of x equals 5 minus x, and then if we try to do this, then we get e to the 5 minus x equals x. That doesn't help a lot. Um, yeah, and th there may be a creative way to do this, but when we're on the AP test, we're going to think fast. The fastest, easiest way to do this uh, is with your calculator. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Calculator. That's what uh, I like to hear. So look, someone find yeah. that x value where it stops being the natural log of x and 5 minus x. And it's there. It's there. Okay. Yes, Section. It asks you the first curve, you put the cursor on the first curve, press enter, second curve, press enter. Guess just means get your cursor close to the intersection. That's really most useful when you have two graphs that cross each other several times. That's why it's asking for a guess. But they only cross once, so you don't even have to get it very close. You just press enter again because there's only one intersection. Is there a question? So, yes. No, I'll ask you. I'll ask my question if I know. All right, so we found the intersection point. We found that this, this x value is 3.693. It also tells us this y value is 1.307. Uh, it's not really going to be necessary to know. Um, and but then what here? What are we integrating? Um, natural log squared. Natural log of x squared. Dx, very important. You will get marked down if you do not remember that dx, because without that dx, you're not. Add hmm? from that integral? You add that integral to that this integral. Okay, that, okay. Plus, okay, this integral is going to be what? 3.693. Picks up where the other one left off. To 5. To 5. Yeah. If you're not sure, five. then this what's this y value right here? 0. 0, so you set y to minus x equals 0, solve for x, x equals 5. Of what? Y minus, oh, five. Five minus x squared dx. Okay. okay, and be careful, pay attention to the directions because uh, what do we do next? Nothing, don't. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you leave her. So just leave it, it says do not evaluate. Just write it, do not evaluate it, so this will be just fine. Okay, so take uh, the next about 14 minutes and 14 seconds to work on, I think, the next two. 
that are square cross sections, not rotated solids. That's the next two.
as you were working, I was working, and I was recording my work, and so if you want to go back and watch it in sequence, you can watch that. Um, I was so wasn't explaining really anything, but trying to make everything clear. Here we go. Um, the only time that we need to like change integrals, write a, a new integral, would be if one function, um, if like the y value is somehow changed. Okay, so basically, if the if the two functions cross each other. But that doesn't happen here. This does cross below the x-axis, but let's see what happens, uh, like how we would find the length of each of these sides. It's always going to be the top function, the greater function, the function with the greater y value. Whether, whether it's in the positive or the negative, it's still a bigger number than this one down here, right? Because negative is considered smaller. The more away from zero you are in the negative direction, the smaller a number you are. So this number is bigger than that one. Um, so it's always going to turn out to be sine of pi x minus x cubed minus 4x. So let's look at it right here. Here's a positive y value, right? And what about this y value? It is what? It's negative. So if we take the sine of pi x, that's what this is, sine of pi x. And then we take x cubed minus 4x. Oh. which in this case happens to be negative, and we so subtract that from that, which this okay. is positive, subtract a negative, we actually wind up adding this distance, this, this, uh, this positive distance on to this distance here. Okay. Let's look at it here. We have this negative distance, which is also sine of pi x, and then we have this negative distance, which is x cubed minus 4x, we take this negative distance and subtract, again subtract this negative distance, then we'll wind up adding it, okay? Adding this distance to, uh, or sorry, that's just an app that I made. So, let me, let me back it up a sec. Back this way, okay? So that green one is sine of pi x. This one, not actually next to it, but might be a little confusing to put it on top. This bigger distance, further away from zero, is x cubed minus 4x. And if we take this minus this negative number, we'll get this value as a positive. Does that make sense? OK, so if you want to find like, the vertical distance between two curves, as long as you're taking the larger minus the smaller, the top one minus the bottom one, it always comes out for you. Comes out well for you. All right, so that's how we define any side length of any square that we might consider along this uh, region. Okay. Uh, then I just distribute the negative here, and then the area of that of that, that square will be this side length squared. Okay. Then the volume will be the definite integral from zero to two. We can set them equal to each other if we wanted but they're making it really clear to you that it's, it's two. They're trying to help you out there. Okay, so then how did they come up with 10.228? It looks like no other work. Calculator. Calculator, do you know how to use a calculator to find this? We've done it before. Yes. That, that is integral. So we put in this function, sine of pi x minus x cubed plus four x. The whole thing is squared. I want to find the integral. So, this, just to redraw the graph, okay? This looks nothing like these graphs because this function defines the volume of the solid, okay? okay? The accumulated volume of the solid. So then we go to calculate down to number seven, where you see the integral. What's the left bound, the left limit? Zero, two is the right. Yeah. Wait for it to add it all up. Oh, wow. It's 10 .2 oh, so nice. It's actually really cool. Now, our mathematical integrity makes us want to do this by hand, of course. But there is a time element to the AP test, so if you're in a section where you can use your calculator, you can.
can think of a way to save yourself some time, even if it's a simple function that you can find the answer derivative of, you should just use your calculator. It's, it's, unless it's a really, really simple function, it's going to be faster. And, and the, the faster you are at this, the, the better it'll be for you. Okay, so there's that first one. Next. Uh, same kind of an idea. The base of a region is defined by blah, blah, blah. Uh, the cross-sections are squares perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, find the volume of the resulting solid. So, here we have the region defined by the three things that give us the x-axis, y-axis, and negative 2x plus 6. Um, any square along this region will always, the side of it will always be defined by the height of the function. So the side length is negative 2x plus 6. Yes? So I, like, do you see that, you know, um, where it's 4x squared minus 24x plus 36? Yes. I took 4 out of there and then put it in the front as, like, a, you know, sure. even coefficient. But I think I might have messed me up because I got, I got, like, 37 and a third, which was just a little bit off with 36, but. Yeah, um, so maybe did you factor out 4 incorrectly? Um, did you get x squared minus 6x plus 12? No, plus. So we have this function negative 2x plus 6. That defines a side length. Then we square it to find the area of a square. Then we multiply it by the width of uh, the little box. Right? And, it, and, and it, the definite integral is a, a summing function. It, it sums up the, uh, well, these kinds of functions, the values, all the y values of this kind of function. Now I can do this by hand. But unless, at least for what I've given you, if it doesn't have a no calculator sign, use your calculator. Okay. So it doesn't take long for me to do this, but again, you should use your calculator. Thank you. So we really quickly, we got our last thing, put this guy in there. We don't even want to expand it out. Okay. We're going to square it. Negative 2 plus 6 squared. Right away, we can hit second count, go to number seven. Go from zero to three once it's done drawing. And we have 36 squared. Wow. Wow. I want you to go on and uh, up to, let's see, here's the midpoint of this class. So this is a really common kind of a question that you'll see on the AP test. Okay, particle motion. If you see no calculator, you got to figure out how to do without a calculator. So we'll do one like this, and uh, then I'll give you time to work on them individually. All right. So the position of a particle moving along a straight line. 
as we were imagine this, this particle is moving along this flat line, and that sometimes it may be positive, sometimes it may be at a negative distance, and it may turn around a few times. That's the kind of situation you should start out knowing is going to be possible with particle motion. Um, so at any time t, so the, the position is given at any time t by this function right here. So if I plug in a time, that's going to tell me where the particle is. Where is it? Is it 5 to the right? Is it 3 to the left? Uh, or up or down, depending on which straight line you're thinking of. What is the acceleration of the particle when t equals 2? So how will we, with the particle's position function, find its acceleration? Second derivative. First derivative would be velocity. Second derivative would be uh, acceleration. So let's work on that. See if you can win against me. something that was really common in the test, but also not too difficult. Um, okay. So what's really helpful these particle motion problems and other kinds of problems is to keep in mind that there's this uh, distance or position function up here. Okay, that's like your, your basic function, and then you take the derivative of that, and you have the rate of change, the velocity. Okay, so you can think of the position and the velocity, take the derivative, you get the acceleration, you take the answer derivative of the velocity function, you get the position, take the answer derivative of the acceleration, velocity, okay, second derivatives are used for concavity, first derivatives are used for rate, for rates of change, uh, and, and maximums, and minimums, and so if you can think of all the, all the stuff that that original functions are used for, and their derivatives and their second derivatives. It may be in terms of position, velocity, acceleration. It may be in terms of y value, rate of change, and uh, concavity. It may be uh, several different things. But for particle motion, it's very helpful to take it in, first, in terms of position, velocity, and acceleration. I don't want to say you can't use a calculator, because then I think they're pretty simple. <laughs> what? Because then I think that they're pretty simple. They have a tendency to be simple as far as taking the derivatives and the derivatives. Yeah. Yeah. But then yeah. the questions sometimes can be pretty challenging. So yeah. we'll do this one together, and then I'll just turn you over and uh, let you do the rest on your own. So particle moves along the x-axis. Don't let that throw you. Don't let the, the, the fact that it's moving along the x-axis make you think um, that you can confuse the fact that it's moving along the x-axis with this function here. Notice this isn't even in terms of x, it's in terms of t. Okay. So when you see x-axis move along the x-axis, just think it's moving on a straight line somewhere. Okay. So what, uh, for what values of t is the particle at rest? So what will tell us when it's at rest? Setting what? Setting the derivative, which is the velocity function, equals zero, because the velocity is about rate of change of motion. And if it's got zero rate of change, it's not, its position isn't changing, which means it's stopped somewhere. So first we're going to take the velocity function, okay? So V equals, I guess we should do V of T, equals um, 2 T squared plus 5. Um, now what do we do with the velocity? Mm -hmm. Okay, we say the velocity is going to be nothing. It's not going to be moving. That's when it will be at rest. Okay, and now what? We have no calculators here. Mm. Factor. Factor. Well, let's see. We know one of these is going to have to be 2t, and so it's going to have to be t. We have to multiply to 2, and that's a negative, so maybe like a plus 
1 plus 2. Uh, no, they got to be negatives because this has got to add to a negative. So uh, we'll erase that and that and try two negatives. All right, let's see. 2t squared. Um, negative t, negative 4t, negative 5t, negative 1 times negative 2. T equals one half, T equals two. Um, almost what values of T are equal to half rest? Two. Those are checked for like a hole or something. Mm, there's not gonna be any holes or anything like that because there's no um, T's in the in the denominators, there's no square roots of numbers, there's no Logs of numbers, like there's nothing that could cause this to be undefined. So let's, let's look at it this way. Uh, one way to figure, figure out the total distance would be to take the distance at the end and subtract the distance at the beginning, and you find out the total distance. And notice that it says distance here. Total distance. As opposed to, what word did we talk about before? Position. I'm trying to remember. I know that another was. word that starts with D. No. <laughs> Beginning distance, which should sound eerily like fundamental theorem of calculus. Yeah. Pay attention. But oh, let's uh, kind of reprove the fundamental theorem of calculus here. Another way is that the distance equals rate times time. Okay, so we should take the rate times the time. Do we know the rate of change of the particle at any moment? Well, at, at any moment that we choose, we can know the velocity, right? The rate of change, the rate that it's traveling. The rate here, how fast is it traveling here? Four. Four, 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 four. <laughs> so all along here, it's traveling a velocity of four, a rate of four, right? For how long of a time? Four. 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 Well, what's that the same as, like, graphically? Oh. Rate area. times the time. Oh, area. area. Wow, oh, okay, I understand now. Oh, okay. it's easy now. Oh. So we take that area and that area. And this area, which would be negative, but then we turn it positive. Oh, it's just from 0 to 12. So back that up a bit. Not there. Remember to make that negative area positive because this is distance, not displacement. Distance would be, whether you're moving positive or negative, you're racking up miles. Okay, but displacement, if you move positive and then negative, you're canceling out the positiveness that you just did. But that's not the case with distance. Spike there. So it's here. Did you do that, Ian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just got 16 plus, another 16, so 32. Wait, I thought it was negative. 
we talked about distance and displacement, right? The difference between the two. So if the particle's moving left, then what what about any of the functions that we might be able to find would tell us it is moving left? Velocity. If their velocity is negative, you're yeah. moving to the left. Positive velocity is moving to the right, negative velocity is moving to the left. We've got the velocity function right here. So you've got to figure out when it is negative, which means, how do we start that? Equal to zero. Okay, set it equal to zero, because that would be when it transitions from negative to positive, possibly. So we set V of t equal to zero. That would be the same as say zero, set it equal to the cosine. So let's see, the cosine of an angle equals zero. So what angles have a cosine of zero? Oh, pi over two. Pi over six t would need to be equal to pi over two or three pi over two, or pi over two plus pi, or any multiple of pi. Yes. Here is an angle right there that has a cosine of zero. And at pi radians, we find another one, and at another pi radians, we find another one, and another pi radians. So any multiple of pi radians. Okay. Uh, we need to solve for t. How do we solve for t? Okay, so multiply by six over pi. equals, okay, so that pi cancels that pi, get 6 over 2, that's 3, plus 6n. Um, so let's see, um, so at what time? Any 3 plus 6 times n, n being an integer. So any any values of n that would cause this to be any number between? What are we interested in the particle stopping? Or? Zero, to zero. zero to 12. Okay. Uh, okay, so if we let uh, n be 0, then at 3 seconds, at 3 seconds, like if this were a 3, we'd have pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 would be 0, right? Yeah? Okay. So if t equals 3, right, if, if this is 0, so we don't add anything to 3, also at 9, if we add 6, right, 6 times 1, 9, if we add another 6, that's 15, so that's not anything we're interested in. So what about times 3 and 9? Would we just find out? That's when it stopped. All right. So we got to figure out where is it moving left. It might be moving left between zero and three. It might be moving left between three and nine, and maybe between nine and twelve. So you just got to test all three of those. Right. Don't have a calculator for this one. No. Where does it say that? It says the position is negative. So we're just going to try it out. This is the velocity function. We plug in 3, or start something between 0 and 3, like 1. That would be very easy. OK, so 1, that's the cosine of pi over 6. So uh, v of 1 is positive or negative? Cosine of pi over 3 is positive. So it's greater than 0. So that's that's not a, a, val a value that we're interested in because we want to know when it's moving negative to the left. Negative. Yeah. How about v of five, five, six. Why don't we six. Just do six? Six. Yeah, that's a good idea because it cancels out the same. Yeah. So it's the cosine of pi. Oh, cosine of pi. <laughs> negative one. So that is uh, negative. So less than zero. And V of between nine and, and twelve? Twelve. 
11, uh, 12. Uh, we could do 12 because it says equal to 12. And 12 will cancel out that 6. That's a good idea. 12. Uh, pi, well, no, 2 pi is 1, which is positive. Okay? So V of T is uh, less than 0 for all T between. Actually, we shouldn't put equal to 0. Between. <laughs> Between three and nine. Okay, so there's our answer. For uh, for B, like to you know, evaluate an integral expression that gives the total distance traveled from the particle uh, run times t equals zero to six. Okay. Now, the total distance, the nice thing about this is we've already kind of reviewed this topic, right? We're given the velocity function, and we want to find the total distance, so what did we do? We found the area, how do you find the area of the curve? The antiderivative, the definite integral, points A to B. The only thing about this is that it says total distance. What's important about distance? Forward or backwards. Forward or backwards is good. It counts up the distance, right? So then yes. we have to figure out if it's moving backwards. Well, we don't want to count that as negative distance. So we want to find out where does a baby cross over from oh. traveling in a positive direction to a negative direction. But you know what? We already did that work. We found out that it stops at 3. So from 0 to 6, uh, it's going to stop and go backwards starting at time equals 3. OK? So we're going to have to take the definite integral from 0 to 3 of, uh, yeah, cosine of pi over 6, t, dt, and then subtract, subtract because this is about to be a negative that we find from 3 to 6, uh, same thing. Thank you, you just watch out, it's about to get you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> 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 <laughs>